In this fluid mechanics problem, it states that an ice skater weighing 100 pounds glides on one skate at a speed of 20 feet per second. Her weight is supported by a thin film of liquid melted water from the ice by the pressure of the skate blade. Assuming that the blade is 11.5 inches long and 0.125 inches wide, and the water film has a thickness of 5.75 times 10 to the negative 5 inches, estimate the deceleration of the skater that results from the viscous shear in the water film. So this problem is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is basically apply the free body diagram, sum the forces, and find the acceleration. However, the slight trick to this is find the viscous shear force. So the first thing we have to do is actually find the shear stress acting on the skate. So if we um, draw the body of water or the little thin film, I'm going to explode it quite a bit and we'll say that the skater or the skate is going in this direction. So that's the speed of the skater or just the skate in general since we'll consider them as a rigid body. Therefore, the velocity profile of this thin film, we're going to have the velocity at the very top touching the skate going to be V. And then through momentum diffusivity or as momentum transfers through the liquid this is going to decrease to zero because the ice is not moving so we're gonna say the velocity profile looks something like this and again this could be parabolic but since the film is very very thin a good approximation is that the velocity profile is linear so we'll define upward from this bottom part of the ice as y and then this total height is simply h so to define the shear stress all we have to do is say the shear stress at the surface of the skate or the surface of the thin film because we only want to find the shear stress acting on the skate. So that's only the shear acting at the very top of the thin film. So the shear at the surface is simply mu times the velocity profile which is du dy but we evaluate it at y equals h. So du dy is simply the slope of this diagram. So that's just simply v over y. So let me let me draw that out. So du dy is simply v over y, but then we evaluate this at y equals h, and then we simply get v over h. So from that, we could say that the shear stress at the surface of the thin film is simply equal to mu times v over h. So now that we have the shear stress acting on the skate, we just apply basically dimensional analysis to find the shear force acting on the skate. So we'll say F shear is simply the shear stress at the surface of the thin film times the area of the bottom of the skate blade. So we'll say A. And the area of the bottom of the skate is just simply, as we defined in these variables, so we'll say that the length of the skate is simply L, and then the width of the blade is also X. So that gives you the area of the shear that it's acting upon. And then you multiply these together to get the shear force. So in essence, what we get is mu times V times L and X divided by H. So that is our shear force acting on the skate or just the skater in general. So now let's draw the free body diagram and solve the rest of this problem. So let me draw the skate right here. It's not gonna be the best picture, just roughly a good estimate. So it looks something like that. That's the skate and we just draw the forces on the, on the free body diagram. So what we have is the weight going downward because the, the skater does have some mass. There's also the shear force going in that direction, resisting movement as we said the velocity of the skater is pointing in that direction this is the velocity and then we have one more force which is the normal force which keeps the skater in equilibrium in the vertical direction and then finally we're going to define x as positive to the right and y is positive upward so now we have our simple free body diagram and all we have to do now is sum the forces in the x direction so we can send the forces in the x direction and this is going to be positive like that. So what we can say this is just negative F shear and this is going to equal to some mass times acceleration in the x direction. So to solve this equation I'm just going to solve for the mass because we're not given the mass in this problem so we're going to use the weight. So we're going to do weight divided by g which is the acceleration due to gravity times acceleration and that'll give us the mass. So all we have to do is solve for a to finish this problem. So we're going to say the acceleration is negative F F shear times gravity divided by the weight. So now I'm going to plug in F shear as what we solved before. So negative mu V L X G over W and that'll give you the answer for the deceleration. Now the trickiest part is probably plugging in the correct units. So I'm going to keep everything in feet and in seconds 
as well as pounds. So those are gonna be the units that I'm gonna be using when I plug in these numbers. So the acceleration equals negative, and the viscosity is pound second per feet squared, and I believe this is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So the value may change depending on what temperature you choose. So let's just plug that in. Now the velocity is completely fine because that's in feet per second. So we can say that's just 20 feet per second. The length is in inches, so we have to convert that to feet. So that'd be 11.5 inches, and that's gonna be 12 inches per foot. So we have to divide by 12 basically. And then we have to do the same thing for the width because that is also in inches. And then gravity, we have to use 32.2 because that is feet per second squared, not meters per second squared. And then finally, you just divide by the weight of the skater, which is 100 pounds. So when you plug in all this, all these numbers into your calculator, what you get is 0 0.240 feet per second squared. So that is the deceleration of the skater, and that is your final answer. So hopefully you saw this problem as pretty straightforward. It's just, it is just applying Newton's second law and summing the forces and solving for the acceleration. The only new concept is that you have to relate it to the shear stress uh, due to viscous forces. That is it for this video. Hopefully this is helping you with your studying, and I'll see you in the next one.